Dr. Fuertes. I hope you're uh, doing well. And one of the things that you had brought up uh, in lecture on Friday was that, you know, you've always had trouble with getting students to attend class. You've always had trouble with getting students to attend lecture. Uh, and so you even have to make attendance uh, mandatory and part of a grade so as to try to help people out with that. And I think I think the main reason why uh, I've, I've noticed anyways in my observation and that the math, physics, and then the chemistry departments are all having a lot of trouble with getting students to attend class and getting students to be interested in it is just the simple fact that it's boring. It's it's not hard. It's It's not difficult if you put in a little bit of effort into it. And I'm not saying that as somebody who's just brilliant. I'm saying as somebody who's just your average student, it's not hard. It's not difficult. It's just really, really boring. And, you know, if I were to kind of, you know, compare that to what I go through with biology, and maybe I'm being biased because I like biology, but, you know, if, if I'm watching a, a lecture, if I'm reading in a book, I can just kind of stop for a second and let my imagination wander off. And I can, you know, say if I'm learning about a new bacteria or whatever, I can stop and think, okay, um, well one, what doesn't make sense to me about this? And that's okay. If I can think of things that don't make sense to me, that's a good thing. That means that I'm asking questions and that I'm engaged in the subject. And I'm not talking about things that are just like, um, not really understanding it from an intuitive basis. I'm talking about things that would make very good research questions. I can ask that, and that's a good thing. I can, you know, stop and look at a mechanism that, say, a you know, parasite or bacterium or that a cell is using and say, oh, well, what are the pros and cons of this? Could this be used for medicinal purposes? Could this be used for research purposes? Um, could, could we isolate this mechanism and transfer it into some, you know, other hosts and things like that? And I'm, I'm engaged on a different level of, of understanding than what I get with math, physics, and chemistry, which to be frank is just data dump. Memorize this equation here, and then be sure that when you take the test, you can solve for x. I don't like that, and I don't think that that's how it should be personally. And I think the reason that you guys are having a lot of problems over there is because, because of that. If you could just balance you know, the intuition, if I'm spelling that right, hopefully so. If you could just balance that with the actual equations, then I wouldn't be so bored. If you could explain to me why we have this equation, why we do this reaction in the first place, and the intuitive knowledge behind that, I think we'd be a lot better off in class. Um, talk about protons and talk about electrons and talk about you know all these orbitals and, and understanding of that. You know, I had a really good um, Gen Chem professor who you know on, on the first day of class talked about you know the electron cloud and how when you have an atom it's really 99% empty space and then there's an electron somewhere in that empty space and what he he would do is he, he would stop in the middle of, of explaining this and explaining an equation and he would talk about it and he would ask questions and he would drive home an emphasis on it and I'm not talking about just like hey you need to know this if you want to be a pharmacist because certain drugs work by this mechanism whoop de doo nobody cares Nobody cares. I don't care. I'm going into the medical field and I do not care right now in organic chemistry if I'm learning something that has, it has of import. I don't care. Just saying. If you would stop though in the middle of class and, and really question uh, th something that's established, question something, and, and I mean in the context of questioning reality, now, now you're getting somewhere with students. Now you're getting somewhere that is actually making them think. And because that's all that science is. We take reality and then we change the perspective, perspective of that. And if that's not what you're doing, then that's not really science. And I'm sure that I've probably pissed off the, the four subscribers I have on YouTube, but it's just a point that I really want to drive home is that math, physics, and chemistry isn't isn't necessarily hard. It's just boring. And it's even worse with math. I mean, I can't let my imagination wonder I'll be behind for the next four lectures because of that. And I think that that's, uh, uh, th this is my proposed solution to that and something that I would really encourage you to th consider. And if you've watched the whole thing through, then I appreciate it, you taking the time.